Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the GarageRoost.com UK Open, live from Stanley Indoor Bowls Club in County Durham. Well, first game on the show rink this morning. We have a cracker for you. Paul Foster, MBE, is taking on the Welshman, Jason Greenslade. As you can see, there, a fantastic drone shot of the Penshaw Monument. This is a replica of the ancient Greek temple built in 1844. So let's have a little look at what we have for the rest of today. Well, we have at the one o'clock game, another second round for you, Wayne Wilgris against Greg Harlow. We also go to the quarterfinals after that. The first quarterfinal session will be at four o'clock and the second one will be at half past six. Just like to just show some of our sponsors that have made this brand new event possible. So we'd like to thank those in advance. And we're now going to go live to the rink because the players are now ready to start this second round tie. Joining me in the commentary box this morning is Claire Anderson. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Jason. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Cracking game on the cards here. Definitely two world-class players on the rink. We have joined us on the live stream meters. this morning. Good morning to you all. Thanks for joining us again. Well, a full day of top class bowls. Decent starter here from Bowl. Normal format in regards to play, it's still the two sets of nine ends with a, a three end tie break. It's a fluid draw, you may have seen if you have joined us from yesterday. So, at the end of each round, the players are choosing a ball, and uh, that will determine their place in the draw for the next round. So, the four winners from this session will draw their ball for the quarter final. As you know, we've got uh, four games in operation per session in this brand new inaugural UK Open. Just give you a quick rundown of what we have for you. Rink number one, we have the sponsor's choice, Danny Dennison, taking on Stuart Anderson. He just forced out uh, Nick Brett yesterday on a very tight tie break. Rink number two, well, that's a clash between 11 and 12 seeds, Michael Stepney and Mark Dawes. Rink number three, David Gourlay, MBE, facing the brand new world number one, Les Gillett. And this is the show rink here for you today. Two red. And Jason's last ball, please. Twelve inch gap. Good ball again from Paul Foster. Hit. Jack's going to leave the rink. Bad bowl out there, first end. Good draw at the re spot. Jason does have a wee bit of room there.
Well, not bad. Yep. Yeah. Line isn't too bad. Just needs to get back, I think. Will it get back? Falls is that off? Not to tell, I just favour Paul Foster's ball. I think Paul favours it as well, I don't know. Yeah, I think if Jason's had failed down, it was maybe close for the shot, but... Yeah, Paul Paul Foster. Foster. Huh? Set score is 1 0 at the first end. Six meters. Well, Paul starting off on the backhand down here. Yeah, well played. Jason playing this forehand. It's quite a Nice swing on this hand, isn't it? Yeah, there's a, there is a decent draw in that forehand coming up the way. Just get by. It's wrecked. down the forehand he can just play into his own if he gets underneath he's got a good chance of getting to he's Jason's bowl yeah. well we gave him four options there <laughs> he got half of nothing didn't he bad connection we also have the live scoring in operation again for you today so you can actually keep up to date with what's going on um, on the outside rinks. I'm just going to post that link for you now onto the Facebook chat. Just click the link and you can see the live scorecards. Well, this is a big chance here for Paul. You can play Sim something similar. similar. Yeah. Could, if you wanted to, also keep it a little bit simpler, maybe play a bit quicker. Yeah. Personal choice it is a good hand with pace. Yeah, the hands on every ring don't really seem to move a lot with weight, so you can set Jason's ball for three or four. Even if he does get away, he's guaranteed one. So something similar, just looking to get just underneath this jack, play Jason's ball out. He's still watching it. In the area, you know, Claire's yep. not going to get the gap, is he? Oh, well played. Good ball. Fantastic ball. Just shows you on a, a normal club green, sometimes you miss them kind of shots at the portable ring, don't you? That's... Yeah, they're very difficult and the portable is, yeah. I'm led to believe. Well, just needs his decent pace and then miss Paul's bowl. Well, drifted by, yeah. Three for Paul. He takes an early lead. 4-0. Score is 4-0 after two ends. Some good games in this afternoon's session for you as well. Jamie Chesney faces Mervyn King. 
Colin Banks, the PBA qualifier from Scotland, takes on Scott Edwards. He had a nail-biting game last night. Darren Burnett faces Simon Skelton. Well, that's a good battle because Simon's 15, Darren 17. And then on the show rink for you, well, that's going to be an absolute cracker. Greg Harlow against Wayne Wilgress. That's live with you at 1 o'clock. Length is 26 metres. Yep, of course, on YouTube as well, for those of you just asking. Yes, players are using their own bowls for this event. You may have just noticed a quick question there. Do players carry more than one set? Well, most top players do, don't they, Claire? Yeah, they do. I bet Stuart's got a few sets with him. I think at one point he had 12 sets of bowls <laughs> in our cupboard. <laughs> 12 sets and of bowls. And I think only two or three of them belong to me. <laughs> so, yeah, Stuart has got his classic red and green. He typically tends to use his red <laughs> most places that he goes. Most yeah. players here are playing with red or green bowls, so I'd imagine that's the bowls that they use every day. Well, Chase is going to find himself in trouble after this now. Yeah. Uh, if Paul maybe go for the respawn here. Yes, I think he'd be very. Jason would be very fortunate just to remove those bowls without some connection. It is possible there is probably a, a four inch gap between the nearest white sticker bowl. Yeah. Yep, going for cover. Just wondering whether Paul may go for a, another shot. Just finished just slightly past the jack, but beating the nearest green stickered bowl. Yep, I think so. I think his last bowl will win on both spots, so he'll be looking just to set Jason's bowl and cover it and count. Let's try and put him in two minds whether he should go again or maybe try and draw to beat the third. Yeah. Depends how close he puts it. It's what you think now, isn't it? You know, it's not a massive target. Are you committed to go again? Do you think, Claire? He could play a really good draw, you know, and still be two down. It's four nil down already. I mean, Paul, Paul's line three here, and his last one has left a bit of a gap. Yeah, Paul's got the both three spots covered as well. Yeah. So, problem well, is when you've ran at it twice, do you really want to risk playing the draw? And He's going to run at it on the other hand, I think. Quick, he's just trying to dump it, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's made contact, nice split on the bowls. Yeah, get some safe. yeah that's a good bowl that. Yeah. Still want to pull. Good saver. Set score is 5-0 after three ends. Who's at danger of dropping out of the top 16? Well, there's quite a few different calculations we've looked at this morning. Mark Royal definitely um, is at risk there. He's lost his first round game, so he's unable to score any more ranking points. Yeah. Darren Burnett, Simon Skelton draw works in David Gourlay's favour. I think that secures his place now in the top 16. 24 and a half metres. It all depends now on how well Scott Edwards does. 
Yes. I think if he gets to a semi-final, that could put a, you know another player at risk there. Yeah. Depends on the result of the Darren and Simon game. It's 40 world Short ranking points that. available for this UK Open. You get 10 points for a first round win, 5 for a second and a quarter win, and you get 10 for a semi final win, and then another 10 should you win the whole thing. So, <laughs> my maths is correct, that's 40. <laughs> All well played. If you are local to the Stanley area, I know there's a few of you from the Newcastle bit, you come down, it's only £2 for the whole day. Just turn up and pay on arrival. These are the top class players. Same for tomorrow as well, semi-finals and final on tomorrow. It's still just £2. Yeah, it's a great venue here at Stanley. It is. I was unfortunate enough that I never got to play on the old Stanley carpet. I heard about how quick it was, but I was never fortunate enough to play on it. Yeah, it was it about 21, 22 seconds. Yeah, it was, really it was quick. Glass, yeah. The new, the new carpet's good as well. Probably not as quick, but it's still nice to play on. Yeah, it's been fluctuating between 17 and 18. You played it very well the other day against Paul. Yeah, uh, yeah, had a great game against Paul. Um, I happy with the way I played the first set against Darren as well. It was just bad second set probably Darren came on to a better game and I went off my game so Paul's well played here. Paul well played. No, has he just, just run out maybe? Yep, just wobbled out there. Francis is saying on to Jason. Nice, delicate draw for Jason. Just slightly over. Yeah, there's a slight element of, of danger. Paul will play something very similar, just get to Jason's ball, tap it down, or a little touch on the jack will be a bonus. Yeah. Now has it just pushed like it enough? Enough. Want to green we think? Jack for three, isn't it? Right. He's lying yeah. one, Francis told us that. He gets this jack solid. Oh, yeah, that's well what he's played. Jason. Played it well. Played it very well. Fortune sometimes favours the brave, Claire. Yeah. And gets him very straight brave. back into this. The score is 5-3 after four ends. Uh, scores then. Someone's asking for the scores on the other ring. Stuart Anderson against Danny Dennison. Well, they're four across after four ends. Danny's just picked up a three. Mark Dawes against Michael Stepney. That's also four across after four ends. Les Gillett against David Gourlay. 5 0 to Les Gillett after three ends. Some good games out there. Some cracking games this morning. It's 
28 metres. Few players struggled with that. Uh, the jack in this direction, just two metres short of the tee. So quite a few players just struggled to actually find the centre of the rink. It's normally quite good, but that particular place, everyone seems to have just struggled to find it. Doesn't seem to quite come back the same there. So the mat is, you know, it's quite far back. It might even be on the tee. Well played. Yeah, well played, Jason. Paul changing his hand here. He's got options to set these balls if he's just a, a touch heavy. Yeah, well played Paul. Alright. Oh, right. Yeah, well a big ball for Paul. Imagine Jason Paul will be switching his hand now too, try and touch that way around the corner. Yep. Nice drag on the jack, three or four. Jack has got this, depends where it goes. How hard does he hit it? Just too hard. Just a little bit quick, that's all it was. Still just the one to Paul Foster, but an awful lot more room now to make a second. He's got nearly four feet of room there. Yeah, you would expect Paul to add another here. Yep. Needs to navigate the front bowl and he's fine. Yeah, well played. Yep. Guarantees two. Two shots, Paul Foster. Got another two to Paul Foster. So it's seven, seven three after five, three after five ends. ends. Yeah, Jason was a little bit lucky there. It was probably a little bit quicker than what he wanted, but sometimes. Could have got that bounce around with the jack, and the jack would have connected on any of his yeah, if red it balls. Locked on one of his balls, it may have just sat within his pack. Yeah, there's uh, Greg Harlow and Kay sat there enjoying this match. Greg's on the show rink next, so he'll be just looking at a few little pointers and what hands the players are playing, etc. Yeah, it'll be a great game this afternoon between him and Wayne. Yeah, that'd be a very good game. Yeah. Four metres. Wayne Wilgress in this event uh, instead of the Israeli qualifier. Unfortunately, there was all kinds of problems with the Cyprus transfer there with Ryanair. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone's going to cause your issues, it's going to be that, that airline. <laughs>
the start here from Jason. Well, nice and solid on Jason's bowl. Yeah, well Good played. Reply. Oh, one to Jason. Uh, Gary, there, the um, Team Henselite shirts that um, Paul is wearing. They're specially made for this this event, so they're not on sale at the moment. Who knows what might what happen in the future, but at the moment, no, they're just uh, Team Henselite players. Nice shot. I'd imagine it would be very popular if they did go yeah. on sale to the public. We had a lot of um, good feedback yesterday. Uh, one was for the, the Henselite shirt, the other one was for the Taylor shirt yeah. as well. Yeah, the Taylor shirt's so nice too. Yeah, the blue, the blue one that Stuart's wearing now, that David had on yesterday, um, that went down quite well as well. Nice yeah. and modern, something a little bit different. Yeah, definitely modernising the game. Drake's Pride have also got a shirt which you'll see Laz Gillett wearing later in the tournament if he gets through. I think it's good for the sport, Claire. We're needing to move on, change Definitely. it. Definitely. Long gone are the days of greys and whites. Especially those grey scarves we used to have to wear. Oh, oh. yeah. Two inches below the knee. Yes. Get your ruler two out. Two plates at the front, two, two plates at the back. Yeah, I know. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yes. You even had to have American tan tights on. American tan, really? <laughs> oh, Jason, what a ball that Thank is. Jason. American tan. Solid, yes, that's a good ball. Good ball. A little bit, a bit unfortunate the amount of room. He's only going to drop a one though, yeah. so technically saved him one. Has something dreadfully gone wrong with this. Jason's <laughs> got plenty of room here, I'd imagine he'll be in the area. Paul will be quite happy just to. Drop the wind with the way the head was sitting. Four is seven four after six ends. Yeah, any more four. Moving to the latter part of this set. See the good scoreboard picture there. Three adrift with three ends to play on this rink. Of course, game's going on over there. Yep. David Gourlay's won the last couple meters. of ends, so as is now just 5 3, was 5 0, now 5 3 after five ends. these players to 
this event he was good. This morning it's got its coat on. <laughs> got another dusting of snow here at Stanley in the night. Yeah, it's definitely cold outside, but I don't know how we can wear that jacket on the green because it was absolutely roasting the other day. And just a little cheeky little nibble of the bowl back to the jack. Yep. Played it well, presented shot. Jason's shoes are the one of the Henselite uh, branded shoes. the logo on the back of them. The difficult question. <laughs> it's a size 7. And <laughs> well, Jason, just needs to get by Paul Foster's shot bowl. Just in the back of it. A good line. Yeah, just needs to miss the front. It. Just needs to get by the front. Yep, yeah, has done well played. Yeah, well played, <laughs> No, it's not a TV event. This one, it's just it's a streaming nine event. Nine four after seven ends. It's live on Facebook and YouTube with you till tomorrow evening. Length is twenty five and a half meters. Okay. Just needs to win this end. Start here from Jason. Oh. Yeah, someone just asking what bowls they're playing with. Well, the team Henselite players, so they're both playing with a Henselite bowl. Paul is playing with a, a strong bias bowl, the Tiger. Jason is playing with one of the more minimum bias bowls um, from that company, the Dreamline. The 
Dreamline has been replaced now. I think it's called the Tiger TX, isn't it? I think is the yes, I think so. The model of that now. You can't buy a Dreamliner anymore. I don't Dreamline. think Dreamlines are very common anymore. I don't see a lot They're of people weak, playing with they, Dreamlines. Yeah. Play with a bowl that suits your game, yeah. really. Some people prefer stronger bowls. Some people prefer a narrower bowl. It's personal choice. Yeah. Depends on the rink. This is a you know a normal club rink. And a, a very good one at that, which is what's allowing these players to play so well and a variety of shots. City, either of these green bowls for another shot. Yeah. Good header bowls all on a bin lid. Yes. Jason will just be up to the draw again. I don't think the angles are very good for the running ball there. Sits down now. Oh, ho, ho. just needed to sit down. One to chase and green slade and a measure. Jason. Yep, one shot to Jason. So he's going to require a full house on this last end just to tie this set. Let's have a very quick look at some of the other scores then. Stuart Anderson, 9 5, going into the last end against Danny Dennison. Mark Dawes, 7 the 6. The set score is 9 5 Stepney, after 8 ends. Play. Les Gillett, 7 3 against David Gourlay, with two minutes to play. from Jason is 30 meters. Okay, 
Please start from Jason. Can I start your warrant when you're looking for a full house? Yep. It certainly is. Oh, we'll just try and secure a good second. Won't be bothered about getting the shot. Just needs to stop Jason's full house. I think. Yeah, can't get us better than that, Claire. Stop touching, go. Shot bowl is a three inch gap, second bowl five inches. I'll just try to beat his last ball. Well, this isn't too far away. Oh, well, he's closing in. Jason's got to get to another two within that. Gonna make that very difficult. Bowl again, yeah, just keep yeah. packing this head out. That's all he can do. There's no way Jason can remove all those, yeah, especially now that's locked in there. Any contact on that nearest white bowl is probably going to remove at least one of his own. <laughs> Another good head. Himself there, just use that as a bit of a practice shot, I think, Claire. Try get a bit of feel for the score is nine yep. seven. So it's gonna be two shots to After Jason Greenslade. Paul Foster's gonna take this first set. One nine set nine to Paul Foster. Just looking at rink one quickly, Stuart Anderson's taken that opening set against Danny Dennison. Ten shots to five. Michael Stepney just got back to back doubles. He's now eight one up going into his last end against Mark Dawes. David Gourlay's just scored a three on the eighth end, so he is now just one behind going into his last end. So some really good games in this session. Twenty-eight and a half meters. Just 
too short with his first ball there. Just went there from Paul. Looks like Jason's reaching this time. Yeah, we played Jason. Mark Dawes has just played an absolute stonking bowl there just to tie that set. One down, managed to plant his opposition's bowl right out the head. So Mark Dawes and Michael Stepney have tied that first set. Um, seven shot, eight shots apiece. Eight shots each. David Gourlay's line a set win here. Line two with Les's last bowl to play. Gone too far, I think. David secured a one, so him and Les yep. have tied that set as well. Yeah, it was just the one, so yeah. Two tied sets, my goodness.
Oh, to have a quick caliper measure. Don't forget we have we have another session for you at one o'clock. Jason Green slayed after all that measuring. Yep. Zero one after the first end. and a half meters. Adjustment. Yeah, very good adjustment as well. Ever so slightly short, it's like two to green. Just land on the bowl of the jack down the back end. Pull won't work, just too much. And a couple of feet by. if that bowl is actually touching the jack. It makes a big difference, doesn't it, Claire, if the bowl is actually sat on the jack? Yeah, it does, because any slight touching his own, if it was touching, he could give it away. Yep, I think that's what's made him decide just to stick with this forehand. I think had it been sat exactly on the jack, he may have just tried to play down the backhand. I think he's, he's on a look for a slightly wider line just to try to slide yep. round about these. Oh, that's yep. Good. Well, he's been a li little bit unlucky. It could have got a lot worse, but... Wasn't far away, makes it just slightly wider for, for Paul Foster. Just wondering, I think he's just wondering what pace he's going to play this. If you see there, look, there's a good picture of, of the head. Play yeah, Paul Jack in the bin. Have, Paul does have best back, so he can play any pace he wants, really. Yep. Backhand just under the line with a little bit of pace. Does he want to come back in time? Yep, here it comes. To Ben now. Ooh, very close. Good effort. Yep, very close. Set Paul's balls. Mm. 
Yep, just going to get past wants to bend right back to those. Yep, yep. it's not too bad. There's a, still a little tuck on the jack for a three or four here for Paul. This backhand down here with, with a little bit of pace, it has been just slightly sticking out with that yard over. Yeah, it's a bit sticky with me. The rink that we're playing on here, this TV rink, is actually sat bang, bang in the middle of the normal rink, six and seven. Just going to stick. Just struggling to get back there. Is that enough to cut the sod out? Yes, yeah. it's strange because when we play here in the PBA, qualifying, it's normally set out. So this is the Stanley Club here. Obviously, when it was a green carpet, it was eight foot rinks, yeah. slightly wider than what we have now. Because there's now a stand that is a permanent stand here, they then went to seven rinks. But obviously, to make it an eight rink, they just narrowed the rink. So they have eight rinks of 4.2 obviously for our world bowls tour events with the respots etc we need 4.6 yeah so we have two of the rinks rink number one as we're playing it is sat in the middle of rink there rink one and two and ours is sat in as actually sat in the middle of rink seven and eight actually this tv rink but when we play rink eight for the pbas it has exactly the same characteristics this backhand with a yard of pace just sticks out I think it's, it's a testament to how good this surface is here at Stanley. It has been for a very long time that like you can play down the middle of two rinks and it just plays just as, as good. Yeah, it's not very often you'll get a green that you're able to do that on. Robert Paxton said he played on rink uh, the rink two yesterday over there, which is their normal rink three. Um, he said it was the best club rink he's played on, which is nice. It's a nice compliment. Over the top, yeah, well done. Yeah. It was good anyway with the miss. Yeah, if you missed that, it was bang on in. Jason will just build it to beat his own. Shout out to Alan Young watching on the stream today. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us again. One red. Simon Skilton is uh, on the next session at one o'clock against Darren Bennett. Well, all on the pace now. We'll come at the end. Yeah, yeah, come down there. it comes. Yeah, well played. Well played, Jason. Too far away. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, well played. Fantastic. Nice drag of the jack there. Definitely one. Could be a pair. Jason will have to be down his backhand now. Get 
So just a steady backhand draw for Paul. Anything within 18 inches should count T2. Two, three, after three ends. Just pulling up. A little bit chilly in here this morning. I know it's very cold outside. It was only half a degree when I arrived at eight o'clock. There's a lot of snow on the ground. It's yeah, there's a lot of snow in my car this morning. Yes. But you're right, it's not as warm in here as what it was yesterday. I'd imagine it's still pretty hot in the green, but... I don't think it's April, would you? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. The scary thing is next Sunday I'm running an outdoor competition at Bolton. Oh, that is scary. <laughs> Our outdoor actually opens tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. Luckily, it's an artificial surface, so oh, it, that's it not shouldn't too bad. be too heavy. But if it's like this, I'll have the right jump on all day. <laughs> Four and a half metres. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll stick to indoor until the end of April at least. About 20 inches short of Jack Pine. Definitely further. Yep, good adjustment. Yep, well played. Well, this is a good chance now for Paul just to put a little bit of pressure on Jason this end. Just to slot another one in there. It's slightly over. Well, I think it could be six. Bad. Yeah, I think it could be three. Yep, three. Just fell off the shorter bowls, so full house down when he goes to play his last ball. Yeah. We'll ask him for the score quickly on the Gillette Gole game. 2 1 to David Gole. Thank you very much for the scoreboard there. As you can see, uh, Denison 3 1, Mark Dawes 5 1, Gole 2 1. Coming back now, this is going to be another. This needs to meet his own. Yeah. A little bit of a ledge there for Jason. Yeah, his pulls left that just past Jack High, so that's something for Jason to sit off of. He doesn't get the shot, he'll at least guarantee himself second. Yep, just needs to guarantee his pace round the front if he yep. rocks off the front again. He will be losing the four. Still 18 inches of room to score second shot. Either that or Thinking about, is he thinking about blasting through the front, the front plant? Does that catch the jack player under? I think it's just a draw. No, he's playing his forehand. Playing his forehand. Blasting through the front yes. plant. I think Paul. Oh, he's, yeah. He's, shot, he's promoted one of his own green sticker bowls.
Well, four down to one up. Four after four Brave ends. shot. Four down. Plenty of room. Brave shot. It was a brave shot. Oh, 4 2. Jason Greenslade takes the lead again in this second set. So, still five ends to go. Jason's opting for these longer lengths. not going to get down I don't think with the pace mm, just, just drifted by right on it two inches Just going to get caught in Paul's ball. Needs to get underneath the Paul Foster ball. Is not going to do, but it's going to finish pretty decent anyway. Yeah, I think if he gets, yeah, yeah, he's purposely played. The I think back. actually there, yeah. He wants to get a similar shot to his last. Do they just like to set any of the balls or turn the weight? Looking for the bowl of the jack. Does it like it? There's one away at least. 
Toss it to one. It is two five after five ends. Five two for Jason in this set. So a little catch up with the other games. And has just finished. Let's put the score on. Five apiece. Two and a half four, meters. Then, he must have yes, it was five down. one. It was five one down. But it looked like it was, was only like, like one yeah. from here, but he must have turned away. Yep. Yeah, looks like. Yeah, four it is. Just got onto the scorecard I can see here. So Scott Anderson and Danny Dennison are five apiece now after six ends. Mark Dawes against Michael Stepney. Mark is 6-2 ahead. David Gourlay against Les Gillett. David Gourlay is 3-2 up. Very, very interesting. Some close, close games. I want to see those score, live scorecards that I can see. I've just posted, posted the link again for you all. Just click on that and you can actually see the breakdown of each end. Well played, Jason. Oh, well played. Fucking bold. Welch needs to make the trip, probably just a foot short. Yeah, yeah a foot 18 inches, that's all. The spot on this side, please. Who showed you where the spot is? Yeah. Just let me know who it is, Barbara. I'll sort that for you. Just looking at this, you either play a dead, dead draw just round the very short bowl back to Jack, it's got to be absolutely precise, or he's looking at maybe trying to open open it up with his third to give himself a chance, maybe. There's a couple of options there. There's no direct hit on, though, is there? That's the problem, I don't think. Not really. I think his base bet is trying to get his own down the forehand onto the short bowl, but. Have to get to the perfect angle. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wants that to go out the back, which I think it has done. So it's just the one still. No back position now, though, so that makes it a little bit more difficult. Can't really afford to attack it. Yeah, he doesn't want to put anything on it to wait and move it.
pingsan na hirin yan. Oh, oh play pull first. Oh, oh. Mm. That was a crack, cracking ball. Has he been a little bit unlucky though? I think he's still one yeah. down, but... What a ball. Yeah. 2-6 after oh, 6 That was very unlucky. Great ball though. Thirty and a half meters. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, it was, na was nine nine seven. The first score. It's got the scorecard changed for you on there. Yep, has been changed. Nine seven was the official first set. Music in the background's definitely made a difference this week as well, Jason. Yeah, I think because there's multiple rinks playing as well, it's something we just wanted to try. I know it's not the ideal music, it's you know, some of it's okay, some of it's <laughs> <laughs> some debatable, of it's a bit dodgy. Um, but we just needed to try. You know, it's a trial thing. Um, we can only obviously have a certain type of music, you have to get the stuff that's uh, yeah. already been licensed yeah. for you, so there'll be nothing like Kyla Minogue or anything like that, but. Uh, yeah, it was a last minute thing, so we decided just to try and get uh, as much of this free music as it's called. And now you know why it's free. <laughs> it's definitely better than Dead Silence. But it's better than nothing, yeah. yes. It stops the distractions. I've been, I've been asking the players, you know, is it a put-off? Do they like it? They actually quite like it. David yeah. Goldley said they didn't even hear it. Um, I think that's just his age. That's, uh, <laughs> I, I think once you're on the green and you're playing, you don't, you don't even hear it. It's just there in the background. Yeah, we have actually got some bit more trendier stuff that we've, yeah. been, we've been looking at it last night, but obviously we don't get back until about half past eleven. So yeah. they're very quick last night, and some of the uh, producing team have had a look at uh, some stuff for us, so we'll try and get it uh, loaded. See how you like that one. It won't be winning any charts, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you might hear it in a lift somewhere soon. But it's, it's a way forward. We're learning as we're going along. And no, definitely. I think this week's been a huge success. It's nice to see these players playing on a on a normal carpet as well. If people, I think, would think these guys have an advantage playing in the portable, but they're all showing just how good they really are on a on a normal carpet as well. Yep, correct. Robert saying you should have rave bowls. Not rave in your condition, bowl. you can't have a rave. No, bowl. I can't have a rave. With baby. I struggle to walk up and down the green for 18 ends. You were getting very, you were getting very red the other day. <laughs> it was very hot. It, it doesn't help that I'm carrying an extra person. <laughs> I was there with my hot towels ready. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, Jason. Doesn't it? Needs to get past balls. Even a corner. Just get caught. Second. When are you, when are you due, Claire? The 16th of July. Oh, a while to go, yeah. Then. Yes. Boy or a girl? A boy. A boy, thankfully. Not in Stuart's contract that he has to call it Taylor, no? No. No. <laughs> no. That was a definite. <laughs> I think Stuart's opting for Billy, I think, is his first choice. Billy? Yes, but I think he's hoping he'll be born on the 12th of July. Okay. <laughs> Just 
side of it. One shot. Well, it narrows the gap down to three. Two ends to play. Three Paul can obviously afford to seven tie ends. this set. He doesn't need to win it. Yeah, he's just really looking for three shots across two ends. Not impossible. Still nip and tuck with Stuart and Danny Dennison's game. Just two ends to play. Danny is one up now. Going to the eighth end. 23 and a half metres. No, he's not. There we go. That end's complete. Stuart just scored a big three. Eight six up yep. after eight. Eight six up now. It's an interesting scorecard that. Stuart's, Stuart's only won three of the ends, but he's scored a four and a scored three in the last three ends, yeah. Hugh Duff seconds that he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Playing this uh, short length quite well, Paul, with the stronger bowls. It's only yeah. just over 23 metres, just by about a foot. Jason going early, looking for Doesn't two of the like bowls, it. or the jack is way under. Paul's definitely getting a, a good draw with decent weight, don't he? With yep. shorter lengths. This is where you play your tactics, don't you? To the, the bowls that you've elected to play on the rink, you know, a, a slightly shorter. Yeah. Um, and Paul Foster's stronger bowls will always be trying to get back to the centre rink. Yeah, with Jason's narrower bowls, he might just kind of scratch about trying to find centre to a shorter jack. He's made the target bigger. Point again. Pull on drive. I said clean. Clean. Yeah. No. It was a good hit, but the Respect. track's gone through the billboard somewhere. <laughs> Spotted Jason is lying shot with the bowl in the ditch, but it's good three meters away. One ball each will be whoever's first in here. Yeah, we'll ball shoot out really. Yeah. Wherever Paul puts this, Jason has actually got the chance to take it off if he wants. Jason's, you know, yeah, trying to bowl for it. Yeah, I was gonna say three if he was to stay. Yeah, that other bowl is off so. This is the shot, but it just removes it. And that's a three from this. Balls a two, secures this set. And a drive at it, or will he draw it? Oh, it's hard to tell with Jason, going for the draw. Try to draw. Looks good enough. Yep. Yeah, on to Jason. So four ahead with one end. For is three to play. seven after eight ends. Yes, Paul has gone back to Henselite, as has Alex. Stuart Anderson has beaten Danny Dennison now in this second round. Two sets to nil. Ten five. Nine six. Mark Dawes has just beaten Michael Stepney. Eight 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 three. David Gourlay one ahead against Les Gillett. 
three ends to play, having tied the first set. It is 30 and a half metres. Jason again. Jason puts his next ball. Well, there's still a chance just to try and create something for his last ball. Let's try and get a drag on this jack. Try and pull it in that general direction. Yep. Slight edge. Edge will come with it. Well, not far away, Claire. Yep. Top side of the yep. jack. Oh, well played. Well played, Paul. Well played. Well, pressure back on now. to get this as close as he can that's still gonna give Paul Foster a chance to try and get to it let's try and tuck it out of sight Mr. Ryan. needs to get past that you know well that ball is hit that's the ball Paul Foster needs to land on now if he can yeah. land on that with anything two yards or more he should stay in for four I think Claire only quick looks hard to tell from the angles. I think it's definitely two. It looks like Cole's third one is just out from here. You can see he's reach it with a yard, channel like Jason's bow. Yep. Yeah, get rid of Jason's wing bowl, sit in its place, will be enough to win this game. language. Sometimes it's easier to tell from the player rather than the ball. We are snipped. He's got to go under. We run off it. Run off it. Nearly. Oh. Oh. Only half a bowl. That's all. So it's going to be one shot to Paul Foster. Set to final set score to a is tie break that we go. Five, so seven. it is a slightly different rules. Yeah, you don't have to score two or three shots, you just have to win the end. Correct. First player to win 
two of the three ends will go through. Part of the quarterfinals will be straight after this session. Let's see who plays who. Yes, you, yes, you. It's out the hat. Eight balls in the hat. Balls one to four will play at four o'clock, and balls five to eight will play at six thirty. you want. spot here. Leave the target as small as possible. You do now, Claire. That's enough to get two, isn't it? Yeah. So can't wing the but can't wing the ball if he's got to literally crunch the jack, hasn't he? Land on the ball and the jack at the same time, and just maybe with that really difficult yard of pace. It is okay. a really difficult shot. I think Paulie was just trying to be as close as he can, but still leaving a gap. I think it's hard to tell. He's got the he's got the respot. Maybe Jason's got the respot. I think Jason's ball's almost right on top of the respot. Well, that'll be interesting if he kills it then. If he goes yeah. I think Paul's, sat on the spot. Paul's danger would have been if Jason could flick his ball out. I think that's why I would have wanted that other one close. But hurry! Oh! Nice and full! Nice and full! Good shot. Yeah. Good shot. I think that was really hard. Like I said, he played that very difficult pace down that backhand, but played it very well. Paul Foster has probably about 30 inches to draw the shot. <coughs> nice 
Nice wide forehand draw, just looking for good pace now. Yep. As he reached, Paul. Yep. As he reached. As he reached. Yeah, yes. Enough. Yep. Well played. That's James Paul. So, first tie break end to Paul Foster. He now has the choice, the but he's given, given the jack to Jason, zero. says go ahead. Oh, Jason, too far away here. Jason's on a slightly wider line here. It's the pace again, I think. Yeah, that's all that's beating him. Now a, y a yard or around the jack. I'm just looking for a slight adjustment. Again. Well, well played yep. the ball. have a look at this a very quick look at the other game that's on the green David Gourlay one ahead playing the last end they've tied the first set very rare you get two tied sets to force the tie break but you never know when you're at this level anything's possible Asking for Jason's ranking. We'll rank number nine. Jack. Well, yeah, popped it away. Paul looking just a slight back in. Yep, just a similar delivery to his last. Uh, Gabrielle, that question is because um, in the tie break you get to choose. So Paul, Paul Foster. Even though he won the M before, it was Paul's 
choice as to whether he then takes the jack or gives it away. He decided to give the jack away, so he has the last ball. It's not like during the game, just slightly different. So just put it, uh, just put it back. Yeah, if you win the toss, you get the choice first and third end, doesn't it? Yep, first and third end, yeah. And the, your opposition gets the choice in the second end. Forward. I don't think he's. I don't think he's on the right line. He's got the right pace. He's just going to bend away. Just under. That's going to be the second. Second end. Yep. Yeah, to Paul Foster. And it's going to be Paul Foster that sees himself in the second round. Second just quickly spin the, the camera around and look at the last end of David Gourlay's here. David Gourlay and Les Gillett drew the first set. David Gourlay is 5-4 up playing this last end. that for a, <laughs> a last a last head there looks like les gillick could be holding one there i think he is that would force a tie break david will be just looking to arrive on that depends on the angle if he gets his own blue bowl onto the bowl or jack his uh, ocean bowl yep they see that's a great angle thank you don't think he can afford to go too quick doesn't want to risk and there's a short one and lifting his own ball out. Yep, just looking just to arrive. Even if he gets any contact on the jack, he's got a ball waiting just behind. Quick eyes, so he's doing his covering here. Playing good pace there, he's got to be very careful with him tying the first set. A one, not ideal to force a tie break, but he doesn't want to lose a two. Yep. Looking at the tie break's better than losing the game. Yes, Daniel, the draw will be live following this, as you can see on the graphic there. Draw for the quarterfinals. Now, later on today, quarterfinals are on at one and at four, sorry, and half past six. Semi-finals are tomorrow, ten and one, with the final round about four o'clock. What does Les do here? Because <laughs> obviously he'll be wanting to win this, but... I think he'll be looking just to lift his own a couple of times. That's his own short ball. Could make the two that he needs. Trouble is, if he flicks it out too far, that'll give David the chance to win the game at this end. Yeah. So. It's risky for both players. Yeah, he's thinking, do you, do you kind of like try and cover the one and then take your chance in a, in a tie break? You try and make the two for the game and force David to play his, his last ball. I think he's opting for the cover here. You're trying to cover David's two back balls. Yeah. He's seen the danger, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, David. 
Similar pace to his last land on that bowl. It'll just flick out. He only needs to turn it twice, Claire. Yeah, he just needs to nip his line a fraction. Yep. You can see his two ocean blue bowls just behind. Backhand with weight, looking to flick Les's bowl away. He's watching it. Gone, I think. Oh! Hear <laughs> me. It's going to be a tie break. <laughs> See Les's face. So, two tied sets here for David Gullet and Les Gillett. 7-7, seven, 5-5. Seven, five, five. Teach. Have a little look at what we have for this afternoon's session. We've got rink one, Jamie Chesney against Mervyn King. Rink two will be Colin Banks, the PBA qualifier from Scotland against Scott Edwards. Rink number three will be uh, Darren Bennett against Simon Skelton and on the show ring for you at one o'clock an absolute cracker Greg Harlow will face Wayne Wilgress Definitely a game we watch that one. Yep Enough a shot, 10 inches past the jack. <laughs> David just needs a slight adjustment in weight. David, how's your pace? It's good, yeah. Oh, well played. Yeah. Mark, Mark is just having a little look. Yeah, Mark I thinks Les is on, yeah. Turn it in. <laughs> David's just really looking to beat his own. Yeah, he can play something very similar to Les, can't he? Just get inside yeah. his own or turn his own. Or over once. could play the other hand if he wants to. Good not good. sure which hand they've been favouring because we've not obviously watched the game, but we'll have a little look at the angles. He's always got Les's ball to set off over in the forehand. Yep, yeah, there's two, two options in there. He has just played that hand, like I say, just anything with good pace, lift it once. Slip inside it. Or stood up well, having a little nosy. There's Lyndon Sham from Hong Kong. Oh, Looking to get to Leslie's bowl can play through the pack as well. Oh hang on one, two. Oh. Nearly. That one fortunate there. Bigger connection on Les's Billy with a sat. That's playing his forehand. Just trying to cover David's balls here, I would imagine. Just in case he runs at it again. It's a tie break this Trudy, first end of the tie break. Oh, 
Well, a draw either hand for David Gourlay now. Both hands are available. To his backhand, I think. Some lad will be sitting ball will be in the area. Yeah. Well, you're yeah, running after for this. Now. Stop now. Well, run. as you reach in. Oh. Not enough. Nope, just not enough, so it's going to be the first end of this tie break to Les. to set the jack length. Going for a three quarter length jack. One. That's a very good start from yeah. David Gourlay. <laughs> Almost perfect, isn't it? A front toucher. I think a front toucher is always better than a back toucher. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> David will just be looking to leave his target as small as possible now and kind of go for cover. Les is homing in. I'll probably cover this, this bottom of the screen here, that kind of spot, spot to the back of the ring. Force Les to play the more difficult draw than a, an attacking shot. Okay. Won't be anywhere near this. It's always best to try and force your opponent into the harder shot. Yep. There's no way David can make that any better apart from to, to cover. Gone down the centre line, so that probably covers both spots at the moment. Dave didn't know to try and cover these balls. Well, the tr yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it, Claire? You think, well, do I play down the backhand and just try and get to that one on the centre line of Les's? However, he's only got to be a ball tight and he's going to yeah, give, give it, it away. away. <laughs> Crowd looking on here at Stanley Indoor Bowls Club. Spoilt for choice and where to sit for these games. Good thing about four games on the carpet the one time. If you get fed up with one of them, you can move on to another. Yep. Most people obviously follow their favourite around, don't they? The group is. Yeah. A lot of people have their favourite player within the top 16. Well, that's not a bad ball from David, is it? That's no. kind of forcing that 
Well, you hit it now. I don't <laughs> think, think Les can get underneath there with what it was playing. Maybe able to get underneath and actually set David's ball out. Yeah, it's just it's hard to tell from this angle. I think he's going to have to probably play maybe slightly quicker though. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll get round it. He's going to want to get to the shot bowl as thin as possible on the bias side. Let's flick it away. Hopefully the jack won't move too far for him. Having a little look. No, he like oh, he's it. going now. Yep. Right at the end. One end so the that's piece. the second tie break end to David Gourley. So we're going all the way in this Close game. second round game into the final end of the tie break. The rules change again for those of you that are not aware. This is the only time you're allowed to kill an end in these games. You have to nominate it first. You can nominate as many times as you like, but you can only kill it the once. Go. If it's a tied end, we go into a one ball shootout. I didn't know that. You don't know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, the third end is tied. So if it's a no shot. So if it's two yeah, if it's two touches, it's a one ball shootout. One ball shootout. Only ever seen one, I think. It's not been more quite interesting to see. Yeah, it's, 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 do you go first? Do you not go first? <laughs> Yep, not too bad. Foot past the jack. Here's a winner. Yep, yeah, good stuff for Liz. David will switch his side. Back. Yep. Yep. Well played. Welcome, let's get down to the jack. What's his pace like? I need to done this, you know. Oh, <laughs> Just a foot. No, they're not on sale at the moment, Graham. Sorry. On either side for David here. Yeah, Alan Foles has turned up from Blackpool. Oh, no, it's not Alan Foles. <laughs> It'd be like the last end, this Claire, do you? Les is getting quite close to this now, isn't he? Just trying to get a yeah. play down the forehand and try and get a foot touch first. Uh, I think he's opting for the draw down the forehand. So you a bit quick at his hand, right enough, I don't Fraction over, really. Yep. Just 18 inches, isn't it? Yep. So, two choices for Les. He can draw again down the forehand if he wants to he could play the attacking shot try and plant David's out the head yeah, I don't think he needs to make much of an adjustment on his last six or seven inches to yeah. a foot isn't it that's all he'll either draw the shot or he'll turn that weight
He's just taking his time, settling himself down. Big bowl this. Coming into screen. Oh, just, <laughs> just not reaching enough. This is so dangerous for David now as well. It wasn't as yeah. you know before. It wasn't dangerous. He couldn't really push Les's bowl in. The trouble is, if he leaves it, Les has just got to hit it. That's that's a big problem here for David. Ideally, would like to either float one just by and make it a lot harder. David's looking at the back position here. Just looking if Les does rumble through it and there is a bit of jack movement. Where is the best place to cover? There is three balls just past the jack, so I think it, it, it could ricochet off any of them and go yeah. either side, probably. I won't count Les out of hitting this. It's, you know, it's no. 18 inches wide. I think David's mean what it would be if... Les can get his own and lift David's ball out. Still locked in for the forehand. Well, forehand it is. I think he's playing a blocker, Claire. Yep. Yeah, it's just off your screen, but uh, David Gourlay's <coughs> attempted to play one in the middle of the rink there, probably oh, three yards short. Yep, there you can see it. It's not far off the centre line. Nah. Uh, Maybe 18, 18 inches wide. Probably almost in the line for the running ball. Yeah, because that might force Les onto the other hand. I think the other hand is might, might be slightly better for David. Yeah. You can just see the respot there. Force Les onto his forehand. Nope, he's going to play Hello underneath it, back. I think. Yeah, playing underneath David Gourlay's blocker. Here we go. Very unlucky. Very, very, unlucky. very unlucky not to make a contact with the blue ball. So it's going to be David Gourlay that sees himself into the second round, beating Les Gillett 2 1 on a tie break. Just before we're going to do the player draw, we're just going to go to some of our sponsors. I'll be back with you in a couple of minutes' time. Live draw now for the quarter final sessions. The quarter finals are later on today. Balls number one to four will play on the 4 pm session, and balls numbers five to eight will be on the session at half past six. Stuart, you're top of the uh, scoreboard there, so find yourself a ball. Ball number three, so you'll be playing at four o'clock. Hard doors. Ball number six, so you'll be playing at half past six. David? Ball number four. <laughs> so ball number four, so you'll be playing Stuart Anderson at four o'clock. Paul? And ball number two, so you'll be playing also at four o'clock. Stuart, then, just quickly, just grab you, playing against David. Yeah, it'll be a good game. Me and David's played a few times, so it's been a good game, so yeah, we look forward to it. And how are you finding the new format? I think it's great. It says it's quick, quick and sharp games, and everybody's on the carpet at once. You've won TV rank, and it's, it's great, yeah. It's the way to go, it's the way to go. Great to hear. Okay, thanks, guys. Well, we'll let you have a rest, and we'll see you shortly.
Well, thanks for joining us this... Oh, bit of tennis there, Mark. <laughs> thanks for joining us this morning. We'll be back with you at one o'clock for the show rink, which will be Wayne Wilgress against Greg Harlow. Until then, it's bye-bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.